Hello, church. We are entering into a sacred time. It is the, the Holy uh, Tritum. It's the three services that begin tonight with Holy Thursday and Monday Thursday at work our way through the darkness of Good Friday and we wake up to new life on Easter morning. And so traditionally, uh, those services are a time of reflection. Um, they are considered one large service instead of three individual. As part of a manual, we'll be entering into a time of song and word and table. And so tonight we will have an opportunity to hear some continuing testament uh, and into a time of table and communion with one another. But we know that while we are far apart, this is God's table. It is wide, it is open, it is expansive, it is inclusive. And so will you join me in our first song? Draw the circle wide, draw it wider still. Let this be our song, no one stands alone, standing side by side. Draw the circle wide. God, the still point of creation, round you all creation turns, nothing lost but to read to you today from the unauthorized bible um, poems on the scripture by gary holdhouse thursday creating the sustaining community this evening he gathers them together in an upper room small modestly suited to carpenters fishermen accountants the little man gazes upon his friends the sulking betrayer all of them Behind their masks, he knows them. From the inside out, he knows them exactly as they are. Their false advertising does not deceive him. They know he knows them. We'll take them as they are, work with them. In that lies their freedom and their courage. 
he says to you, I says to them, I've got good news and bad news. Which do you want to hear first? James and John say at once, we always want to know what we're up against. Let's hear the bad news. Sooner we hear it, the quicker we can deal. He says to them, one of you is plain closed and will betray me before the night is over. Let's have no fuss. He knows who he is. We can let it be. The little man continues, tonight my enemies will come for me and I will be taken from you. It may be that my blood will be spilled before the sun sets tomorrow. I do not know for certain. So in a bit we will go off and pray that does not happen. If I should die, do not fear or languish or give up the struggle for I will be with you in spirit and my heart will be in your heart and I shall be alive in you. But you must never use the idea that I am still alive for your own purposes or to frighten others into heaven. We must learn to do good because it is good, not because we fear punishment or because we long for eternal life. And the little man says to them, the good news is tonight, I am going to create a sustaining community among you. It will not depend on your always being faithful or perfect or good or right powerful, unblemished, or pure. It will not depend on you holding advanced degrees or your wealth, skin color, sexual orient orientation, gender, or religion. It depends upon two things, your willingness to share and your memory of me. These two, two are enough to bind you to one another and to your work on behalf of the world. Take this bread then. It represents my physical presence, which has been with you in many adventures. The body of all those forebears who have tried to love and mercy, create justice, build a better world. Whenever you eat bread, remember this evening. Then think on what we tried to do for the poor and the people of the land. They eat a while. The little man says, if the worst happens, every time you drink the fruit of the vine, remember me and the life we shared. For this is the blood of our veins. It courses with life of all the living world. This wine and your thoughts of me will sustain you and restore your spirits. He left the room, went out in the darkness to the garden.
I invite you to lend God your table again this evening. May you believe that God is with you. May our hearts lift to God and rejoice and praise and thanksgiving. That God created this world with plants and living things for our nourishment and had not made a covenant, a new covenant with Noah, it would have been enough. That God had brought Israel out of Egypt and had not dealt justly with Egypt for its oppression, it would have been enough. That God provided all that was needed during Israel's 40 years in the wilderness and had not provided manna and quail. It would have been enough. That God gave us the law and had not led Israel into the land flowing with milk and honey. It would have been enough. That God returned Israel to Jerusalem after its exile in Babylon and had not rebuilt the temple. It would have been enough. That God came to us as a baby named Jesus and had not healed the broken and the wounded, it would have been it would have been enough. That Jesus healed the broken and the wounded, and had not challenged the authorities to embrace those who lived in the shadows and at the margins, it would have been enough. That Jesus challenged the authorities to embrace those who lived in the shadows and at the margins and had not died on a cross to rise again, it would have been enough. And yet, O oh God, you did this to remind us that life always overcomes death, and that out of death, new life emerges. For this, O oh God, we are eternally grateful. And we join with all the saints who come before to say the words of the ancient hymn, Holy, holy, holy God of love and majesty, the whole universe speaks of your glory, O God most high. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of God. Hosanna in the highest. On the night in which he was betrayed, the night we remember in this moment, Jesus sat at a table with his disciples and he picked up the bread and he blessed it and broke it, saying to them, Take, eat, this is my body broken for you. As often as you do this, remember me. And later he took the cup, and after blessing it, he gave it to them, saying, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, poured out for the forgiveness of sins for all. As often as you drink this, remember me. And so by this bread and this cup, we proclaim that Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Set your Holy Spirit, O God, upon this bread and cup. May they be enough. Though we may be in separate places, grant that this bread and cup that through it we may be one body in Christ to support each other in this our time of trial and to proclaim hope through our ministries of healing and grace. We ask all this with the prayer Jesus taught us saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. Friends, it is the bread that makes us whole, one and the cup that makes us whole. When you are ready, will you join me in prayer? We give thanks to you, O God, 
for gathering us together at this table in this moment in time. Though separate by your Holy, by your Holy Spirit and this bread and cup, we are bound as one body in Christ. We go forth from here strengthened in love and committed to bear witness to hope that never dies. May we tell the story of life that always overcomes death through our words and deeds. Amen. <clears throat>